he said, Chal, dunya badalte hai. So I said, what do you mean? My background was a running training company. And this was in the area of skill development, but in tech. A lot of our listeners are also very big on health. Today, you're not linking that data to your medical record. They get people looking at me and they're like, that's not normal. There's the good and there's the bad. There's the excitement and there's the fear. And having an unproductive day. So I would I would trust you know, technology. But maybe if you didn't know, you'd anyways have a productive day. So, last question. What is going to be your next Hey listeners and viewers, it's good to be back with my second podcast series. Welcome to Let's Chat with GB. I'm your host Gaurav Bhagat and you can call me, well just that, GB. Every fortnight we delve into thought-provoking conversations spanning an array of topics from captivating life stories to insights that inspire. Our aim is to ignite that spark in you, the spark that compels you to act to change and to make a difference. So whether you're here for motivation, wisdom, or just to listen into a good chat, you're in the right place. So let's dive into the conversations and uncover more in Let's Chat with GP. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another episode of Let's Chat with GB. And this is going to be an action-packed, tech-enabled podcast, which is going to be an absolutely super one, okay? I have with me today, Kirti Said. Kirti, thank you for being here. Kirti, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who aren't aware, is the CEO of SSC, NASCOM, tech evangelist and more, doing some big things in this space. And this is one relevant conversation that you have to watch out for. Kiti, thank you so much for actually being here today. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Absolute pleasure. So, big things happening in technology, big things happening in NASCOM. But I want to start with where it all began. So, where did this journey in tech actually start for you? What was that, that moment where you knew that, okay, this is the area of the domain where you're going to make a career in? Very interesting question because actually uh, it was totally by accident. I had decided to hang up my boots. I'm pretty old as you can make out. So I had decided enough is enough. Let's take a break. And I just happened to bump into one of my ex-colleagues at a social event. And he said, Chal, dunya badalte hai. So I said, what do you mean? So he says, you know, I've joined NASCOM and I'm working on this project called Future Skills. And uh, with all this tech disruption going on, I think we need to scale the world. So uh, let's do something. So I said, okay, that's at a country level. That sounds pretty cool because so far I always had a job working in a company. So I said, okay. And just like that, he said, okay, I'll set up conversations with you with so and so, so and so, so and so. I met up, I interviewed. My background was a running training company, and this was in the area of skill development, but in tech. So that background helped certainly and so I jumped in and uh, discovered all about future skills and digital disruption and artificial intelligence and big data and all these things that just flow off my tongue right now. So even now if you ask me are you in tech, I would say actually I'm in the skill development space. Tech happens to be the thing that we skill on. Uh, of course osmosis and all that now right. one has learnt a little bit. Yeah. And it's an exciting space to, uh, you know, obviously uh, be in. But if I was to go even further back, you know, was it ever a choice? Because I had, of course, you know, known of you growing up. Uh, you know, I think a lot of time was spent, uh, you know, even at our homes, uh, you know, and and more with, with Bandra and you know, a cousin of mine. But was it ever a choice that you had in terms of, were you ever at the crossroads of what path you should actually be pursuing, you know, technology or something else? Was there ever a choice in between that you decide to take you know, one particular path in your journey? Always. I think um, I have a very checkered career. Uh, so on paper, you know, I look like I'm a very, uh, uh, first did this, graduation, MBA, all that. Right. But then through life, I think I made choices which just took me down very different, different paths. Yeah. So initially, I was working in a corporate job. Then uh, the husband at that time, no longer a husband, but... Uh, at that time, he moved uh, um, in, to another country. I said, hey, this sounds like fun. So I switched right. and I went from a corporate finance job to banking. Mm -hmm. Then from banking, I came, he moved around. I moved around with him, different countries, London, Sri Lanka, India, right. all that. Came back. Uh, then we decided to become entrepreneurs. So we got into the customer service space. So from finance to entrepreneurship, 
um so it's been you know decisions which you could say kind of at one level you could say they happened at another level listen all all decisions are conscious decisions you make a choice so true so uh, so i made the choice uh, i think the real journey to this end came uh, when i decided to uh, join a training company it was a yeah. small company yeah. and i wanted a small space my right. children were small at the right. time so i decided to take that up that i think was a pretty drastic switch from finance banking to right. training and development right. i think that i really enjoyed i sort yeah. of loved the whole idea of in impacting people and you should know that i mean right. you're in that space so on a daily basis you see how you impact lives so it's, it's thrilling Yeah, I think that beats uh, you know having all the money in the world. I mean, just the fulfillment, and yeah. we start hearing about you know successes, yeah. people coming back and sharing some of those you know wins. I think that's just just so so fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. Any lessons that you learned in particular from some of those you know failures in your early journey that you want to share with you know, viewers and and listeners? Um, takeaways that would be beneficial to them. Oh, uh, lots of failures. Um, lots of pick me ups also after that. I think if I were to say simply, I would probably say that failure happens. You've got to take a deep breath at some point and say, "Acha, now what?" Yeah. And not let that uh, bog you down and tell you how the world has conspired to pull you down and go against you. So true. It's not the world. I mean, things happen. The economy changes. The world yeah. changes. Customers change. Technologies change, and they impact you. So you've got to just step back, right, and take a breath. It's bad. It's yeah. bad when it happens. Yeah. For example, when I came back and wanted to get start working again, right, and I had stellar academic credentials. Right. Uh, on as I said, on paper, it's like beautiful. But my CV was so checkered. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to hire me. Wow. So Imagine that's that. you know. So that's the time you say, "What? Am I so bad?" then you have to realize it's not you it's the it's the process the process okay. is you know structured in a certain way and you don't fit in so you have to think of something which is then not in the in the normal way and that's what happened when i joined this company right so it was a small outfit but i was heading the outfit so sure. said that that's a way i will start back again yep. and building up uh, yep. my journey again so that's what happened So yeah, I think uh, you can't let it get to you. You can't let it be about yourself. You can't say something's wrong with me. I think that would be the biggest uh, uh, message. Correct. That always have faith in yourself. Correct. Sounds cliche, but it's the only thing that can get you up. And the other thing I would say is, um, you've got to be with someone, some people who believe in you. Uh, that energy also helps they have to keep reminding you for sometimes you start doubting yourself and your loved ones at that time your partner at that time your parents your siblings your friends whoever it is one so two three people who are there by your side yeah. holding you strong when things are not going so well i think these two things they work i remember on your podcast earlier your uh, cousin vandana had mentioned how that has helped her Correct. and that really resonated with me because it was so true it happens yeah. with all of us so true so true yeah i couldn't agree more and you, know, you have to have that inner core circle that stands by you despite yeah. uh, whatever happens and is never there to you know really judge you and yeah. so and i think uh, that is something that you know was was key in, in vandana's case and of course you mentioned that and, as well and you choose those people right you yeah. choose to then hang around those people right. i think that's the important thing choose your company company that energizes rather than deflates so true no and it's an interesting point that you bring up and i'm just thinking in today's world where you know there's the influences for so many are what's being consumed on on social media on on instagram and on on youtube and all of that um a lot of times we have youth that kind of loses you know direction sometimes just goes on to a path which is you know just perhaps not the best so advice you know to them in terms of you know what they sometimes consume online and where that you know really takes them down like that path just just thoughts on on that side really that's such a big question uh, gorov because today this influence is all around you and uh, so much is about the decisions you take as an individual and if people have decided to go down a path 
how do you pull them back uh, because social media is all around them and you as an individual can only touch so many people i mean i know my children and their friends that's sure. it sure. who else do i know yeah. so i think it's really on the parents it's on the teachers to guide right. to continuously reinforce the message yeah. about how this can completely overtake your life and make you believe things that are not true and and with this whole artificial intelligence um, challenge that is in front of us right now where content you have no idea whether the content is is true is it real is it fake uh is this video i mean today videos are deep fakes are so good you just can't make out what is fake and what is so not true. messages that sound so genuine so i think it just has to be constant reinforcement to say what you should do what you shouldn't do right. and hope that the message gets through so true but so the individual themselves they're already in that rabbit hole yeah. they're not going to get themselves out yeah. it's somebody who has to go and constantly reinforce that message such a big role for parents today in fact the other day i got a call from uh, one of the schools that i'm associated with uh where i had said you need to talk about this to your students and to parents right. so they're actually putting together a workshop on ai and cyber security to teach the parents teach the teachers and then get the students into the room because they say first the parents have to know how important this is parents don't know today agreed agreed yeah and it's a space where i think there's just you know, so much happening and it's it's almost scary in terms of you know what tech can today do yeah. um and i think uh, yeah the entire deep fake space is is a big big area of concern and requires a lot of you know constant uh, you know, monitoring as well so maybe if that's some of the scary stuff is there something that excites you as well something that you're seeing developing right now which you think is is very exciting in the space of of skilling in the space of you know learning something that is really standing out as as a technology or a technological advancement that you find really exciting right now i think what i really find exciting right now and uh, i mean everyone's you know talking about generative ai and i i'm sure you also use chat gpt and everybody out there has and now today if you go on google search also there's a you know gen ai enabled search uh, bing has become so uh, so interesting so what i find fascinating is how each anybody you and me who are not techies uh can use technology to do such cool stuff sure. and we don't need to be so highly technically educated Correct. uh and what that means is that today technology is not the domain of the techies today technology is for everybody it's within your grasp and you were just telling me before this started how your logo has been created by your daughter and i was asking you how did she create it did okay. she draw it or did she use tech because okay. i thought for all you know she went to dali or she went to chat gpt and she could have created something played around with it and a 12 year old well she's anyways created something so great but yeah. she could have created something even more different maybe the next uh, venture that you do she'll be using that so suddenly this power has come into all our hands so you know with great power comes great responsibility for sure so to your point earlier how do we educate people we have to tell them about both sides of it so that to me is a really exciting stuff happening yeah. right now where tech is just getting democratized uh, we all will learn to use it if we haven't already of course and do magical stuff yeah no i couldn't agree more in fact i have you know friends who are now uh, you know senior architects and and it was inconceivable for them to you know actually go down that path and use you know some of those ai tools mm-hmm. but today it's it's just second nature you know they're making those presentations and it's just you know making it so much quicker and and easier and yeah coming to the point of my daughter so my wife is is old school in the sense that she says ai makes you lazy uh, she's like you know use your brain come up with you know creative stuff so you know if you know certain uh, content is being created using ai she'd be like oh but i think this is taking the the innovation and the creativity out of the entire piece uh, we also have that school of thought right which is kind of still fighting this it's fair i think it's absolutely fair to have both sides of it uh, i think our reality is changing in terms what is real what is human creativity um there's a job description of ai writers uh, so an ai writer is someone who uses ai to write well uh we earlier we had a definition of writers which we thought was wonderful but when technology is around you you got to make it your friend so true. um but having said all that i think what your wife is saying really i think what she's saying is 
you've got to know your fundamentals you've got to have your funda state so don't lose sight of the fundas you will have to learn maths you will have to learn grammar you will have to learn science you will have to learn chemistry uh, then go ahead and use the technology then it really blossoms yeah. so without having that fundamental knowledge even the tech will not help so to that extent i agree with her <laughs> yeah right I, i love how you mentioned that you know it's actually being democratized and because there was a time where a tech person slash evangelist was was typecast in a particular way there was some stereotypes you know that but their coding was very important and now that's almost gone i mean i mean sure you should have to come in and do a little bit of you know the checks and, and all of that but uh, times times are are changing from that perspective for sure yes to one to some extent yes the coders are not uh you could say their job has changed but actually their challenge has increased so you'll still need the coders but they won't be doing the vanilla stuff anymore because the low code no code kind of platforms assisted by ai will do the vanilla stuff right. so what is asked of the coders will you know the, the level will go up right. which means we'll just get better products and better thought out solutions so to that extent i would say we we are you know headed for this wonder, wonderful world aided by technology yeah. um but but yeah as i said you know you, the fundamentals you've got to make sure that you have those right of course of course of course that's saying so you know you earlier you also brought up the fact that you know people are always connected to their gadgets and you know um, just those influences coming uh, you know so much from you know, the aspect of what we're consuming online all the time Personally, for you, have you ever gone down the route of a digital detox where, like, okay, I'm just, you know, switching off for a bit, and I'm gonna be, um, you know, just unplugging myself from the grid? Has that ever happened for you? Very often. Very. I make sure I choose holiday destinations where there's no signal. Fantastic. So <laughs> we just went on a trek to Kashmir, six days, no signal at all. Wow. Um, so I, I think it's crucial to just get away from it all because this, it's just too constant otherwise. So true. I wouldn't last like six hours without being connected <laughs> to the net, and I think that's yeah one thing that I I find with a lot of people today that you know, maybe it's, you know maybe it's my forward. generation because you're a different generation from me practically just by a, a no, bit maybe uh, but quite yeah, a bit right, yeah. Uh, so yeah maybe that's why I can do it a little easier I think my kids would have a harder time right yeah I mean even if I'm flying somewhere and I fly to the US and they say there's no Wi-Fi and that happened on Air India flight recently and I'm like. Oh my God! Like direct Delhi, Singapore, uh, Delhi, uh, San Francisco, and there was like you know no internet, and uh, it was scary for a bit. But I think eventually one kind of you know makes their peace with that. No, no, I think you do need to make your peace with that. Yeah. Uh, to me, a long flight is a delight because you know I never sign on to the Wi-Fi. I don't even want to know whether it's free or paid. I don't want to know. I'm not, I don't want to access my device. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting, and I think that you know sometimes when you are off the grid and and just have some time to think. Just some great things happen over there, so I think um, that's something I would totally, <laughs> totally agree. Um, if I were to talk about, you know, what do you really see happening over the course of the next few years? So, if you call it like a weather forecast for the tech industry, in a way, uh, what do you see happening in in the space uh, in the few years, in the next few years to come? That's a dangerous question because uh, when you know when ChatGPT was unleashed on this world, I don't think any of us realized what implications it's going to have and in the past year that it's it's been around right. things have really really changed and i don't think we could have anticipated that as well so looking into the future is a very hard uh, task the kind of uh, you know ethical philosophical uh issues that are going to come up in front of us i think we can't even imagine it because we are in a paradigm where we think we think in a human way yeah. but today ai is doing a lot of the thinking for us uh it's not thinking but the way it's re- reasoning or the way it's putting things together yeah. actually it is thinking for us when you choose a movie on netflix or when even your search results pop up on google or when you choose something on amazon after all ai is helping you make those decisions so it is governing your decisions in a way but when that goes into a different scale altogether when you start thinking of countries of war of you know ai enabled weapons of security considerations of geopolitics and the implications are so huge that it's just difficult to even imagine 
But if I, I mean, so I, I think one thing I can say for certain is that AI is going to be everywhere, and the sooner we understand what it is and how to use it and how to be careful about it, yeah. it's not sooner. We have to do it now. We have to do it today because it's here. Yeah. Um, I do see the way something like education will happen will completely change. Right. Um, the role of the teacher will change. How we do assessments will change. What we teach will change. How we teach. So that's a big, absolutely yeah. big one. Uh, the way jobs are structured, what you're looking for in a person when you hire them, uh, that is already changing. Right. Uh, it used to be in the tech industry that you hired people for tech skills. Today you give equal weightage to tech skills and the human skills because you actually want the person to be able to think. Correct. Problem solving, creativity, logical reasoning. This is something that you want. Because if you want to design a solution, that human being is going to tell you what is that problem and what is that solution. Mm -hmm. Tech, the, the, the tech can help, but it does not decide today. So that the way uh, you learn uh, needs to change and that is not happening fast enough. Yeah. Our schools need to change, our colleges need to change, our teachers need to change. Um, in terms of the technology itself, uh, today we are talking about GPUs in computers which have a certain speed of processing. Once quantum comes, which is a completely different technology, it's again going to be as transformational as AI is today. Wow. So difficult to even fathom like could you have imagined what what generative ai is going to do or what it can do and this is only a year that Correct. we're talking about yeah. so when quantum happens i mean a simple thing like passwords quantum computer can beat any password in a few minutes really? so what happens to banking what happens to you know your security we've all got our digital lives yeah. what happens to that what happens to identity so it's uh, you know the it, it, I can cannot imagine the implications. I'm trying to read up about it. Right. I mean I'm in the skilling space. So I'm trying to skill myself on this, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's hard because right now it's all in the philosophical realm. The reality we only know when it comes. Of course, of course. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know I think you always have um, pieces that are being written about uh, you know the, the both sides of it. So the, the, the positives you know and the negatives. But I think in the end. Humankind always figures it out, right? So I'm sure this will be just you know one of those transitions. No, we're already seeing it. I think I read this newspaper article yesterday. The New York Times has sued uh, OpenAI to say you trained your model on all our content, so you violated IP. So I'm kind of hoping that those kind of guardrails of laws right. that already right. exist right. will help us in some way in containing these models yeah. and containing what these algorithms do. So yeah, I'm optimistic too. <laughs> right. And it's a slippery slope. I mean, I think what happened even in Hollywood when the writers were going on strike and you know, I have a friend uh, who works uh, at a, a big media house in New York and 31 people, 30 got sacked mm. because they said one person can do what was being done by 31 in the editing space. Yeah. Um, but again, I think people, you know, then again, come back to the, the skilling piece, uh, figuring out, you know, what do they need to do to stay relevant in these times? And I think that's something that's extremely Learning to learn, that's the one skill. Yeah, yeah. So, you often are interacting and engaging with a lot of the youth, uh, you know, of, of the country and attention spans. And I go into colleges, you know, and I speak and um, you know, I, I work with some of the youth as well. I see attention spans have just crashed. Mm. Okay, and, and you mentioned this earlier that old styles of teaching wouldn't work anymore. Yeah. So, any thoughts on, on what do we need to do as educators in terms of how can we think out of the box, what can we like bring to the table that makes the engagement with you know, today's generation uh, more appropriate? So, uh, tough, because I think uh, with Google on your fingertips, uh, anyways, the teacher is always being second-guessed to say, you know, I can always check what the teacher says. So, true. so, so that... Is anyway something everyone has to contend with that assume that your your student is fact checking what you're saying and maybe even knows more than you. Because sometimes these YouTube videos that you see, short ones, are so good that they can teach you the basics of what you really want to know 
very quickly which the teacher may not be able to teach you so well so your student is a, assume that the student is ahead of you so how do you keep the student engaged i think it's going to be about more about uh creating something or doing something or developing something so if you're uh teaching something around say mechanical engineering is going to be more about showing how it works building something with your own hands right. uh, experiencing what that learning is this whole thing of you know sit in a classroom and take notes won't happen um video always works sure. uh, you know that uh, so make sure that you use the technology to teach get people engaged today you can have access to the best in the world uh, of content so there's no excuse for using boring content so i think teachers <laughs> will have to work a lot more harder to keep the students engaged we may even ask is the current model of degrees and you know bachelors and masters is that going to be relevant a good it's a it's a question i don't yeah. know yeah. because if i can learn just in time today i can learn a tool a uh, Uh, an ai based tool in you know maybe an hour of watching a couple of videos testing it out myself and i am good to go so why do i need to do a course for 30 hours so this is my constant fight with the uh, with the regulators to say you keep saying do so many hundreds of hours of learning who's doing it today nobody is so this idea of micro credentials the idea of bite size learning the idea of um stackable uh stackable credentials yep. so do this then do this then do this and add it all up right. to add to what you know i think that probably will change yeah i think it's spot on the fact is that you know times are changing and even uh, just sitting in the classroom and consuming content like we once used to it's not going to work just taking notes like yeah. why should i take notes i just yeah. put my phone on Correct. or just videotape the teacher and then if i have to videotape the teacher i might as well just watch a youtube video Yeah, not the not the best time to be a conventional, uh, you know, no. academic uh, <laughs> instructor because yeah, I think it's just that the game from their side, the expectations have been upped so much now that I think a little bit of out of the box thinking is required over there as well. Yeah, let's talk about um, technology for social good. So something that you've come across in recent times, which you know, you just you just you know, something that like what B J Fogg would say, you know, create shine just warms you up from inside when you think of. you know that particular innovation that may have happened uh, in the space of technology that you just thought that okay wow this is so nice something that you know, anything that really comes to mind you know there's so many i'm just trying to think of an example okay i can think of one mm-hmm. so there was this global conference uh, just happened gpa global uh, program for artificial intelligence yeah. global partnership for artificial intelligence yeah. so there were a lot of companies that were displaying their um, applications over there so i don't know if you've read about this thing called bhashini so it's a it's a government of india um uh, tool mm-hmm. which is using how to live use uh art ai yeah. and indian languages so they are building applications so cool. which are voice enabled right. so now it is targeted at an in, at indians who don't know how to read and write and that as you know are many many indians right. and as far as the government is concerned that's the kind of people that they need to target so uh, the ceo of bhashini he dem- demonstrated for us where he logged on to a, a site which was about insurance and he used the voice to speak into the app to say uh, you know what happened i uh, my my remittance hasn't happened right. and then it the ai went through the database and said actually the remittance has happened and check your bank account number such and such which is where the remittance has gone no and so it actually the remittance had happened he also demonstrated upi again voice enabled upi over the phone uh, not using the app just using voice and then you tap you punched in a, a, a otp or a pin yeah. and without using an app just voice enabled you could do upi uh there is so many in apps like fasal kranti and all a kind of apps where the farmer just speaks into the app and they get to know weather patterns or you know what is the right time to sow the rice right now and Fantastic. where the ai kind of looks into all the environmental information that is available right. and tells the farmer what to do wow, that's phenomenal it's crazy it's yeah. crazy fun what's going on yeah. i was talking to the youtube person the other day and this is something i say in every forum now i said 
did you know that there are translations available for all YouTube videos? So if you click on those three dots, right. your video is in English. Right. You click, say, I want the translation in Hindi. Yeah. And just on the fly, you'll get the video translated into Hindi. Look at the world that has opened up now. I mean, all this YouTube content. Anybody who doesn't understand English can consume it. So true. Did you know that Microsoft Word allows translation into 12 Indian languages? I knew that they launched something new yesterday. I'm not sure this no, is no, one no, of the initiatives. No, no, this is old. Oh, this is old. Around. So yeah. I translated recipes. I was trying to teach my cook how to make uh, caramel custard or something. Right. And I put the, pasted the recipe in English and I just went to Microsoft Word. I said, translate to Hindi. Beautiful translation, properly formatted. Amazing. Now look at the potential of something like this for a country like us. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say social good, I think these are the things that are going to... You know, judgments. Uh, today you can translate. Uh, there's a tool, uh, CDAC, again a Government of India organization, has a tool that will take PDF documents in English and translate it to an Indian language. So if you have a court judgment which you right. can't understand right. because you're a Hindi speaker, yeah. translate it to Hindi. Phenomenal. So. Wow. <laughs> Those are some brilliant innovations. So you mentioned about how, you know, we're having some amazing uh, innovation in India. Yeah especially like in the social space as well. Um, do you also feel that India is kind of ahead of the curve in terms of you know, some of the, A, the adaptation that we're doing and also the creation and innovation that we're doing in this space? Do you see this happening quicker than you know, some of our Western counterparts in, in Europe and the US? I won't say we're ahead. Um, if I were to look at the stats in terms of startups and patents and all that, then India is clearly not... Uh, as far ahead. But if I look at adoption of technology and at the level at which we adopt technology, that we are clearly ahead. So when I, uh, you know, talk of things like UPI or when we talk of things like DigiLocker yeah. or we uh, talk of um, uh, all the all, all the services that are now today available online, right. uh, India's adoption of technology has is definitely more broad based right. even our apps like the other day we were talking about Blinkit to someone and they were from the US and they said what are you saying like how does this thing operate right. like in 10 minutes what you want is yeah. at your doorstep yeah. somebody has created this service and model that seems to work so the way we have taken to technology so I think is uh, fantastic and I keep talking about examples from the government because I work very closely with the government. I mean, as you know, the Sector Skills Council is a, uh, works under the uh, National Skill Development Corporation right, right. and we work on skilling for the IT sector. We implement government programs. Yeah. That's a program at massive scale. I mean, just in IT, we skilled about 300,000 people last oh. year. Uh, on Future Skills Prime, which is another platform that we run, um, which is sponsored by the Ministry of IT, we have like 1.7 million people on the platform just studying. So the scale at which we operate, because we work along with the government, right. uh, you know, it's it's just massive. And there's a push, very conscious push uh, in all kind, you know, every ministry that you are you are you are uh, working with right. to say how do you bring technology into this solution. Uh, it it has helped us even, you know, the DBT or direct benefit transfer, which is now at the base of so many of the schemes we do. Okay. The fact that everybody is getting a direct benefit transfer means they have a bank account, means they have an identity, okay. means they have figured out how this whole enablement occurs. Okay. So digital is now you know, embedded in the core of uh, every Indian this then leads to solutions which are very uniquely Indian. I mean, I think this Blinkit is, a, is an example. Yes, right. um, so in, in terms of frugal innovation, I think we are still doing very, very well. Okay. We are building our own uh, foundation model. So, I mean, maybe you know what foundation models are, but for your listeners who don't. So chat GPT was, is based on a large language model on which then different applications can ride. Because somebody trained this massive model, lots of computational power and data needed to create it. So not everybody can create it. Right. But 
chat g open ai based it on all the english content right. which for india is a problem because yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know how many people actually speak english in india so now in the government iit bombay is creating what they call bharat gpt so building a foundational model based on indian languages indian context so when you ask it a question it's answering in the context of what an indian would would relate to right, right. and this is really important because if if all assume that all applications will be based on a foundation model sooner rather than later if the base is something which is not based in your language your culture what you're getting is responses that are limited in right, application right, right. so the bharat gpt concept is a very you know fundamental requirement for a country like india so that leads to innovation which may be not the uh cutting edge ip related type of innovation that we see in the west yeah. but very grassroots very implementable very solution oriented uh, stuff that's what's happening here having said that there's a huge push to go the product way so we call it product and services right. product is where you're creating ip yeah. services is where you're building on something sure. so ip is what generates the real money i mean you think of microsoft say aws or the google and all what right. are they earning money on it's it's you know that technology that they have so there is a huge effort now to support that awesome. um during the gpay conference i think there was this whole discussion that the government will support investment into creating computing infrastructure because our startups our companies will not have the money to be able to buy this right. so they will find models of investment where they can create this facility that people then can come and use because otherwise how will our companies yeah. be able to compete globally that would be very very hard right. so that's you know those are the kind of things that we that are going on is a big consciousness publicly in the public sector and the private sector to say that eventually it's the product innovation that we need to promote it needs also massive talent or quality of engineering talent that we have but not enough quantity so how do we support that so the work that we do in in uh, uh, skill development is looking at say maybe a level 1 level 2 kind of skilling but we need the you know, world class engineers which are coming out of the iits the ias right. the institute of science and all that yeah. so how can we help them grow mm. so we have to look at the entire gamut the people at the top and at the people at the bottom right Yeah, no, I love that. And in terms of smaller towns now coming to you know the fore and also adapting, you know, some of your uh, technology, uh, some of your uh, tech, some of the courses that you were actually offering. I see a lot of uh, tier two, tier three cities, uh, and people coming in from there as well and being a part of the programs that you're offering. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, on, uh, as I mentioned, on Future Skills Prime, we're one point seven million people now. Uh, but 60% i would say are from tier 2 tier 3 towns and um and mostly coming from colleges which are in these cities right. now this is actually really good right. because if these towns have this kind of talent industry will move to these towns because today where where will the tech industry go where will any industry go and today every industry needs this, this kind of talent so if they can see that the people there or there is a framework like why has pune developed the ways developed why has coimbatore developed the ways developed you know it's it's these they have built on the education uh, 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 institutions and so industry has followed so that's we are actually seeing that happening uh, in india now uh you go to an indore you go to a bhuvneshwar you go to it's fantastic it's really wonderful to see how these uh, cities are coming up that be great for even uh, decongesting some of the cities i mean you know where we are in in delhi and bangalore i mean infrastructure is just struggling a little bit and i yeah. think it'll be good to have some of the smaller towns and cities also you know come up and and bear some of this burden so and so many people they have come from these towns they can go home yeah, yeah. correct correct yeah yeah you know i've been speaking in raipur and and bilaspur and, and when you see the hunger that you know some of these people have uh, you know just to be better and and you know just create new things and and just do you know things that will really kind of bring out you know their why their purpose it's just phenomenal and 
just taken everything with you know so much uh, enthusiasm and they don't they don't take things for granted which a lot of people in the larger cities really yeah. do and i think that's really good to see as well i think that's what we also figured in in uh, in the work that we do on skilling we said ah our mission is not really in 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 the delhis and the bombays and the bangalores it is to go beyond because here they will get taken care of there are jobs here sure. there are education institutions here <clears throat> so they the opportunity will come yeah. how do we broad base this i think that's that's eventually what lifts india up also for sure for sure yeah what would your advice be to someone who is well maybe in college and uh, you know now looking to pursue a, a career with potentially the next you know big thing happening in the space what would be your advice to someone who's uh, you know at that path in their life at the moment um you know going back a little bit to the co- the comment that you made that education today is challenging because you know teachers are faced with all this dis- disruption that is going on around them yeah. so first is use the resources that are around you <clears throat> because today there's enough available uh, the platform we run is free to access there are lots of paid programs there but there are lots of free ones too so there is nothing that stops you from learning even if technology is not your field learn about it because at some point ai will not take your job but someone who knows ai will okay so you must you must know what it is you must uh learn to not just protect yourself but also understand what responsible ai is right. what ethics in ai is because eventually you will become a leader you will become a manager these decisions you will be faced with these decisions right. Right. so you must understand what this whole question is about you know we talked right. about this earlier right. there's right. the good and there's the bad yeah. there's the excitement and there's the fear and yeah. there's this whole contrasting thing so you must understand this uh if you can take advantage of the resources around you if you understand this framework in which to operate a responsible framework in which to operate then nothing can stop you because then the world is at your fingertips your phone today has everything you want you need to right. know right. so you cannot say i didn't have an opportunity today so just get all rid, rid of the boundaries in your head get out there and understand even language cannot be a barrier today mm. today technology will help you overcome the language barrier so understand how that technology can help you right. and then then nothing can stop you because so, now you know what you want to know you can right. learn what you want to learn yeah. you you can find the opportunities where they are right. platforms all exist mm. they go to any job portal go mm. to any learning platform go right. to anything kya seekhna hai kahan naukri leni hai it's all, it's all there. available yeah. so if you don't do it then it's it's on you <laughs> it's not on Agreed. it's not on uh, yeah. your yeah. your circumstances also true and i think the opportunity that lies for you know india today is, is unparalleled i mean we haven't seen anything like this forever or you know it's in the past uh, at least for sure and i think it's just a great time to be know in the space and, and leveraging these opportunities um, that are actually there and I, i love the fact how you said so much of your content is actually available for free yeah um because you know the other conversation or commentary that i hear a lot today is how people are being uh, you know miss sold to they're being sold uh, you know products services courses dreams which are just um, i think just being miss sold you know and it's there's nothing in terms of what you know there should be there and people are just getting sucked in because of of glitzy marketing and and just being you know sucked in and and just doing themselves a big disservice there yeah. yeah i mean some of these companies are also doing great work so you know we shouldn't paint everybody with the same brush but i hear you i mean i, I know that you know uh it's difficult to say what's real and what's not so uh we're hoping that we are able to provide something that people can can use as a that's technology for social good also so true so true as we come to our concluding you know few minutes a lot of our listeners are also very big on on health and fitness um so is there something that you're seeing where uh, you know technology and health and fitness coming together to you know create things which have been uh, interesting and um, you know just anything that comes to mind from that perspective for you i think technology 
is now at the core of health and fitness if if your listeners are into health and fitness then they all have a wearable that they are using so, so it's either their watch or it's some band or it's something which is tracking every move and tracking every correct. calorie and correct. all that so whether you're doing even something as silly as an intermittent fasting or whether you're doing as something as you know 10000 steps or you're doing your how many kilometers that you cycled it's all data that exists so today you're not linking that data to your medical records but very soon that's going to happen where all that data will be available in one wonderful pool so when your physician is actually diagnosing you or trying to see what's up with you you'll be able to see your entire activity chart your parameters your blood reports your mris your x rays your everything will be there so i think technology is is uh, going to it already is actually at the core of so much that is happening in medicine and on health and fitness also whatever regimen you do i think is uh, is is tech enabled in some way or the other agreed all yeah. of our machines are digitized every parameter is measured so i think they they know that uh i just sometimes feel that like someone sleeps you, you go to sleep and you wake up you say tk i slept but now everyone looks at the app to say did i sleep well <laughs> I, yeah. i don't have a digital <laughs> 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 yeah i hear you i mean i'm wearing uh, you know i have the aura ring and the luna ring and they're all there and they're tracking everything and yeah. sometimes when i wake up and you know and, and if i would reach out for my phone and it see that oh, your sleep score is like a 55 i'd yeah. be like okay maybe i need to go back and, yeah. and sleep a little bit more and again people look at me and they're like that's not normal i'm yeah. like but it's the difference between having a productive day and having an unproductive day so i would i would trust you know technology but maybe if you didn't know you anyways have a productive day True. who knows so True. i you know it's okay i don't judge it's all right <laughs> whatever yeah. whatever floats your boat <laughs> Agreed. 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 so last question what is going to be kirti said's legacy uh, you know when you are able to hang up your boots uh, what really is going to be your legacy what do you really want to be remembered for ha huh. well what i want to be remembered for is um having an impact on uh on this whole skill development space that i'm in right now yeah. i have the opportunity to paint on a canvas which is not just indian but also global uh you know we were part of the g20 and every country is looking to india to supply talent because there's a talent shortage everywhere there's a people shortage everywhere we have the people we have the talent so if i can influence some of the policies that we uh, work on make them more accessible make them more uh, universal and meaningful uh, we will create a better pool of talent a better indian shall i say so if i can enable some of that i would like to say yeah i did that and yes. that's something that you know continues to this day yeah. so uh yeah so I'd, i'd like to i'd like to i'd like to say that i helped make that happen something that affects ev- all indians uh i think that that would be great lovely no i yeah i mean you can you know, just see it in your eyes that that's really something that would excite <laughs> you and, and you're already doing amazing things i mean you know what we hear about all the things that you've been doing in the space and the time and effort that you're putting in is is absolutely phenomenal so thank you so much for you know doing what you do and and creating a better no, india I, for tomorrow yeah but you know i think what i love is i think um yes i am passionate about it and i have become passionate about it i i, I knew nothing when i joined this. Sure. so uh five years ago if you asked me i knew nothing but now i have become passionate and i have a team that actually also continues to surprise me yeah. because i think they are also equally passionate and that's why it works you you can't do something like this yeah. Yeah. and eventually and there's some very very qualified people in my team they've all taken pay cuts they all in big fat jobs right. earlier but now right. they're working here all because they believe yeah. what a life to be able to be working with a bunch of people who believe the same things that you do yeah. so yeah i love that <laughs> yeah so powerful and i think it's it's so true when simon senek would say that you know when people are financially invested uh, they want to return but when people are emotionally invested they want to contribute kind of hit the nail on the head right yeah. yeah awesome lovely thank you so very much uh, you know for being here today for coming down to the academy and and you know sharing such amazing insights and 
in conclusion, just wondering where could some of our listeners and viewers actually connect with some of the initiatives and you know the the SSC at, at NASCOM and some of the where where are some of these uh, you know of course we'll put the links in the in the comments and all of that but just some of uh, the places where they could find access to all the amazing things that you mentioned. So on the learning platform, uh, futureskillsprime.in is okay. the site to go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can follow us on uh, X. You can follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, SSC NASCOM is sscnascom.in that has all the information on the certifications available in the skill development space, programs that the government supports as well. So if you have a you know a challenge, you can't afford certain programs, you could right. sign up for one of the skilling centers right. and do some courses there which are supported by the government. If you are a startup, you could go to the NASCOM uh, startup site and see the programs that are available for startups, you know, mm-hmm. as incubators or connecting with larger industries or women's women's programs. So the NASCOM website has a lot of uh, stuff available too. Uh, yeah, I think those are yeah. learning resources, business resources. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I'm going to get some of these links, uh, you know, from you and put them uh, in the comments section or the description of the, yeah. of the YouTube podcast. That'd be well. great. But yeah, thank you so much, uh, you know, for being here with us um, today. We do have uh, something as a token of appreciation uh, from our side uh, as well. And this is a kit that's been created by all uh, women entrepreneurs. Huh. So uh, yeah, I'm sure when you get back, uh, you know, you'd like to take a look at that. So it's just a, a small, uh, you know, goodie it's box. It's not small, it's very big. Yeah, but then there are like small things inside. <laughs> and uh, so just uh, a little something. Oh, uh, thank you, know, you so for, much. For thank you well. so much.